Intercepting a phone call for Vera Harvey, who was murdered, Brenda is ordered by an unidentified man to bring the paper bearing the unsolved code numbers to the room once occupied by Joe Heller. As she and Chuck enter the dark tenement where Joe was killed, why didn't you come alone? You didn't tell me to. But I thought you had better sense. Did you bring what we were talking about? Why, yes. Well, where is it? It's right here. But first, I want to see if you're the person I think you are. Never mind that. Hand it over. I can't see you. I'm here in the closet. Take a step forward. Your bodyguard can stay where he is. He's not my bodyguard. I don't believe you're Vera. Who are you? Who are you? Joe Heller! Brenda. Brenda, where are you? I'm over here. Chuck, are you all right? Yeah, but I was sure worried about you. Oh, I'm okay, but I lost about 10 pounds. Did you get a good look at that guy we met here? Certainly. It was Joe Heller. Joe Heller? Then he ain't dead. It was Joe Heller. It was his ghost. Don't say things like that. Hey, Brenda, did you ever go to one of those spirit meetings? Yes, I went once. Nothing happened. Why? Oh, I don't know. Maybe they got something. They're all fakes, Chuck. Well, we just saw Joe Heller's ghost, didn't we? The film and your camera will prove or disprove your theory of spirit manifestations. Let's find out. Hey, you know something? Maybe I'll get a medal from science, or at least a bonus from Pop, if I got a good picture of Joe Heller, ghost or no ghost. Right. Well, let's go in there. Kels, take over for me. All right. All right, boys, let's have it. We didn't get a chance to look Vera's apartment over. Cops got there about the same time we did. Were you seen by the police? No, that is, they never got a good look at us. Thanks, Sir Bretha. And if you hear from Brenda, call my office at once. What? <laughs> yes, yes, I'm sure the dinner was excellent. Oh, now, don't worry about that. We're glad you had enough. Goodbye. Our Bretha told me she ate all of the birthday dinner. But if we come by later, she'd be glad to scramble us some eggs. Oh, I can get scrambled eggs in any beanery. I kind of had my tongue shopping for some of that home cooking. <laughs> Actually, you accomplished nothing. You came back here with no definite answers. I wanted you to find out whether there was anything in Vera's apartment that would tip the police off to us. All right, see if you can get this. Go to a public phone and call Vera's apartment. If the police are still there, they'll answer. And let me know what happens. You know, we haven't uncovered a thing here. And I'll bet my pension check that Chuck and Brenda were here sometime tonight. Oh, I'm not taking any sure thing bets like that one. You beat it out to another phone and have this call traced. I'll try to stall them. Hello? Hello? Wait till Pop Walters gets a gander at this picture. Not to mention Lieutenant Farrell. Larry will be delighted. And I'm going to make a little bet with Tim, too, that Joe Heller ain't dead. Chuck Allen, you're positively dishonest. Well, he's hooked me on a couple of short bets. <laughs> come on, little negative. Come up nice and sharp for Papa Chuck. We've been gypped. There's nothing on it. Can you imagine that? The biggest picture of the year, and I get a bum negative. Oh, darling, maybe it wasn't a bum negative. Maybe you moved. Yeah, I guess I did. But can you blame me with a guy in the dark you can't see pumping bullets in your direction? Of course I can't. It's all right. I love you just the same. Come on. Gosh. Maybe we don't live right. Everything bad happens to us. We'll never make Larry Farrell believe us now. <laughs> we couldn't convince him even if we had a picture. Convince me of what? Oh, good evening, Mr. Farrell. Do come in. Don't you know it's impolite to sneak up behind people and scream in their ear? Aren't you a little touchy tonight? What were you going to prove to me? We saw Joe Heller a little while ago. Oh. Hey, this is serious. 
Mm -hmm. Young lady, you need a doctor. You see what I mean? Listen, we either saw Joe Heller or his ghost. Boy, you've got it bad. All right, all right. I knew you wouldn't believe us, but this is the biggest story yet. We not only saw Joe Heller, he shot at us. Oh, something new has been added. Now ghosts carry guns. Yeah. Just a minute, my little ghost chaser. I want to talk to you. Not so fast, Cuckoo. Listen, Timothy. One more smart crack like that, and I'll run you down the street so fast people will see the bottom of your feet so often they'll think you're laying down. All right, all right. But before they assign you to a nice, cute little padded cell, let's get our accounts straight. You mean you want to settle up our debts? Right. However, you'll never make enough money to pay all you owe me. Now be sensible, Brenda. Come on now, tell me the truth. Look, Larry, I'm a newspaper woman. I deal in realities because I haven't got time for anything else. Do you think I'd cook up a cock and bull story about Joe Heller being alive if I hadn't seen him? I know. Brenda, I saw Joe Heller's body placed in Potter's Field. All right, he has a double. Now, play fair. You owe me ten dollars? Goes down on the list. Now comes the famous Evans kidnapping case. I want to see that. Yes, sir. You remember that. We bet $25 on that one. Okay. Put it down. Twenty-five bucks. Mm, I'm beginning to think there might be something in what you say. You lieutenants are getting smarter every minute. But whether you believe me or not, I'm going to write a story that'll crack this town wide open. There's only one answer to this thing. Either Joe Heller has a double or... Or a twin brother. Do you know such a person? No, but it won't be hard to find out. You bet it won't be hard to find out. When this hits the front page, something's going to happen that'll crack this cake. What are you doing? You're not going to write this story, Brenda. Well, I'm not going to write this story. No, you're not. Let's be sensible about the thing. If you were to print this story, the man we're looking for would only disappear further into the underworld. We won't put anything in the paper about it. But I'll spread the news around that you and Chuck saw such a person and that you did get a picture of him. Then we'll say that the police department, well, they won't let you publish the story nor the picture until I grab the guy. Get it? Well, it has possibilities, but suppose the man doesn't fall for it. Look, Brenda, I've been handling crooks for years. There's nothing they fear more than the thought that maybe the police department knows a little bit more than they let on to know. Well, I can admit you've got something there. Of course, it's the only way to smoke the guy out. Now, look. If he tries to leave town, we'll grab him. If he tries to come out in the open, presto, we got him like that. Okay. Just one thing, no leaks to other papers. Mm -hmm. That's a promise. What do you mean, Tim? You added it up yourself. This machine's no good. Look, I get a grand total of six billion, thirty-two million, four hundred eighty-six thousand, seven hundred and eight dollars and two cents. Yeah, that's what you get, all right, but Tim, you added it up yourself. But look, when I subtract what I owe you, I wind up by having to pay you three bucks. <laughs> well, I can't help that. These machines can't be wrong, you know. Maybe so. But from now on, I'm going to keep our records in my head. And I know they're right. You're absolutely right, pal. Your head's better than one of those machines any day. <laughs> For me. Any more information on the ghost, Lieutenant? Brenda and I have arrived at the conclusion. <laughs> I bet we come out on the short end of that deal. No, we won't. Larry's got a good plan, and we're going to try it. I'll explain to you later. Here's the code Joe Heller gave me. Brenda, you're not going to let him... Believe it or not, Chuck, Miss Starr has turned over a new leaf. From now on, she's working hand in hand with the police department. Oh, this sounds like a fairy tale. Hmm. This is a strange thing. I've tried every combination I could think of, and it still means nothing to me. Well, it means nothing to me either. But you can bet your sweet life it meant something to Joe Heller or whoever was trying to get it away from you. I'll put our code expert to work on it. Oh. Remember now, Brenda, and you too, Chuck. From now on, we're playing our little game with new rules. I agree. No holding out on each other. Me too. Anything that Brenda says is all right. Promise? I promise. Uh-oh. Put your hands out in front of you. Come on. Now, no finger crossing. Now, say it again like a nice little girl. I promise. Good. With that attitude, we're sure to get someplace. Come on, Timothy. Chuck Allen, you're cheating. Oh, I am not. You trust Larry, don't you? Well, I trust him, too. Now, that's fair, ain't it? How far can you throw a piano?
Frank's waiting for you. What's up? I don't know. Well, it's about time you got here. We hurried over just as soon as we got your Never mind that. Now, get this, you two. I just had a tip that Brenda Starr and a photographer met a man they believed to be Joe Heller. That isn't all. They claim to have taken a picture of Joe. But the cops won't let the newspapers publish it. Are you trying to tell me I didn't get Joe Heller? No. I got some more information while you two and the rest of the outfit were out taking the rescuer. Cut out the mystery, Frank. What's it all about and what do you want us to do? Let the boss tell us what to do. Hello, boss. This is Frank. I have some important news. The man seen by Brenda Starr was Joe Heller's twin brother. His name is Lou. Lou knew about Vera Harvey and was trying to work with her. Unfortunately for Lou, Vera took a vacation before they had a chance to talk very much. Then, Lou tried to contact Brenda Starr. Possibly Lou thinks that what little information he has pieced together with what the Starr girl knows will lead them to the hidden loot. The police will locate Lou Heller through the pictures they have of him. We have one sure way of keeping the police from getting the Lou Heller before we do. Make a contact with Brenda Starr. Lead her to believe that she can meet Lou Heller. Frank will arrange the details. Is that all? That is all, except work fast and surely. I will not tolerate any mistakes. I don't like to disagree with the big boss, Frank, but Brenda Starr won't fall for that. Why, she'll have the whole police department with her if we try to trap her again. I agree to that. You're forgetting one thing. Brenda Starr's desire to beat the police to a story all the time. <laughs> Give us the details. Now, this time, it's got to click. Now, are you sure you know what we want, Testy? Who do you think I am, a dope? We'll reserve an opinion on that until you get back with the staff. Just a minute now. Vanilla ice cream with chocolate syrup and a hamburger with nothing on it but tomato ketchup. Got it? Right. Right. Well, leave us face it. Well, so you finally decided to honor me with your presence. Honest, Pop. I mean, Mr. Waters, we heard right away. I'm not interested in that. Miss Starr, will you kindly enlighten me as to why you made a deal with the police department to kill a story without first consulting the editor of this newspaper? I thought that was what you wanted. I'll tell you what I want, Miss Starr. Mr. Walters. Now, please, may I get a word in before you tell me what to do? Try and understand, Miss Starr, and you also, Mr. Allen, that I am running this newspaper. Or am I? Mr. Walters, you asked me to cooperate with the police department, and especially with Lieutenant Farrell. I only do what I'm ordered. That's right, Mr. Walters. But we missed the biggest yarn of the year. But I was only doing what I was told to do. Well, uh, that'll be all. Uh, let me know the minute something breaks. If it does. Oh, sure, Mr. Walters. You know us. Yes, I know you. Both of you. Here you go, Miss Brenda, just like you ordered. Keep the change, Pesky. You're a smart boy. Thanks. Say the old man scream much? Oh, no more than usual. I knew it. So you're a pretty smart boy, huh, Pesky? I bet. There's something wrong? Pesky, dear, would you like to share some of the refreshments you brought us? Well, sure, but I got it for you and Chuck. Oh, but we'd be delighted to share it with you. Uh-huh, you can have some of mine, too. A nice hamburger with chocolate syrup all over it. And some delicious ice cream with tomato ketchup on it. Now, sit down. You eat it. Hello? Yes, this is Brenda Starr speaking. I appreciate you not taking that picture of me, Miss Starr. And I'd like to meet you again. Yes? Yes? I'll do just as you say, but... Come on, Gil, what is it? That was the man we made the picture of. He wants me to meet him. When? Where? Daisy, get me Lieutenant Farrell at police headquarters. Hurry. Wait a minute, Brenda. Are you really going to let Farrell in on this? We promised, didn't we? Besides that, I think we'll both live longer. Hello, Larry. Larry, this is Brenda. I've just received another mysterious phone call. Yes, this time it's the man we made the picture of. What was the address? Okay, got it. And the time was 9 o'clock tonight? 
It's a garage. The number's familiar to me. I'm supposed to drive in, sit in my car alone for half an hour to be sure I'm not being watched and he isn't being watched. What? Oh, Larry, now look, I played ball with you. Now, Brenda, do just as I tell you. I'll borrow your car and some of your clothes from one of our policewomen. Now, you stay in your apartment until you hear from me. Understand? But, Larry, I'm not afraid. You'll have the place staked out and I'll be covered every minute. Okay. But you call me the minute something happens at that address, will you? Gee, Brenda, you sure we're not missing out on something? I'm going to trust Larry this time, but if he doesn't keep his word, if we don't get the beat on all the other papers, so help me, I'll get even with him. The suspense will kill me. Imagine sitting around here waiting for that phone call to come in. Brenda, I don't think I can stand it. You're going to have to stand it, Chuck. Oh, I'm sick. Maybe this will teach you a lesson. That makes sure I'll either cure him or kill him. Take your car over here, then, please. Okay. Parked up at the other end. stroke of fate can stop the onrushing murderous car. For the answer, see Manhunt, Chapter 6 of Brenda Starr, Reporter, at this theater next week.